the only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. We find in several areas of our Bible where the Bible references the day of the Lord. All of my life I've heard that Jesus is coming to the church. May I say today that I'm thankful this world is not my final home. I'm just a pilgrim passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. I, as the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Bible says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also, uh, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, or with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I, all of my life I've been in church. This is all I've ever known was growing up in church. And I've heard all of my life that Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. But may I say this morning, ladies and gentlemen, I believe we're closer today than we ever have been before. I'm not depressed today. I'm impressed to know that God knew how this thing was going to be. I'm not looking for the undertaker. I'm looking for the upper taker. Somebody say amen right there. It's going to be a time. What a day that's going to be when my Jesus I shall see. The Bible references the day of the Lord in several different passages of Scripture. And I'd love to take 2 Peter chapter 3 and dissect and unpack this text for just a few moments and I'll take my seat. Number one, I, uh, concerning the day of the Lord, I want you to see the Bible tells us the day of the Lord will come as a thief. I believe Jesus was coming to come back whenever we least expected. Somebody say amen right there. How many know we're living in a world today where nobody is expecting Jesus to come? today. Uh, people believe that he's coming. People believe that he may come, but very few people are looking for Jesus to come back today. Uh, not only do I see the day of the Lord will come as a thief, but I also find the day of the Lord will convert all of our troubles. I wonder if there's anybody here that you live a trouble-free life. You like that here at all? Uh, the Bible said, Job told us that a man born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Trouble on every side, trouble on every corner, all every time we turn around. I mean, our world is full of trouble. You don't have to look very far to see trouble in our society today, but I'm thankful to know that one day Jesus is going to come back. And as we look around our world today, I, I've never seen so many Christians that walk around dealing with discouragement, walk around dealing with despair or anxiety, all the things that come in our world and because trouble is a very real thing. But I am so thankful that when Jesus comes back, when the day of the Lord comes, uh, it's going to convert all of our trouble uh, and we're going to Leave all of our heartache behind. Leave all of our sorrow behind. I'm so thankful to know that I am simply a rich man separated from my resources this morning. And one day, very soon, we'll leave all of our trouble behind. We'll leave all of our heartache behind. We'll leave all of our cancer behind. All of the general, everything. We'll leave it all behind. And we'll get to go to a perfect world. Somebody say amen. The day of the Lord will come as a thief. The day of the Lord will convert all of our trouble. But also, I find the day of the Lord will complete all of our testimonies. It'll complete all of our testimonies. How many of you know that all of us are living a testimony in this life today? I believe with every fiber in my being, uh, someday whenever we walk into uh, whenever we walk into church, it'll be the last time we ever walk into church. I believe you know that there'll be some times we'll get in, in the choir off and we'll sing a choir song, it'll be the last time we ever sing the choir. Uh, sometime I'll get to stand behind a pulpit and I'll preach, it'll be the last time that I ever preach the gospel. That's why it is my duty. That's why I have everything inside of me to make sure that I, every time I come to church, every time I send my out of pulpit, I give everything I've got because you never know uh, when it's going to be the last time that we get it. I believe that every child of God uh, ought to live for the Lord with everything they've got because for all we know, uh, this could be the last time we ever get to come to church. Uh, this could be the last service we ever get to attend. Uh, this could be the last moment we ever get to worship God on this side of eternity. Uh, and while we're here, we ought to give everything we God, uh, could I tell a mama, could I tell a daddy, uh, could I tell a grandma or a grandpa, we don't have very much time left, uh, you don't have but just 18 summers with that baby, uh, you don't have but just a few moments with that life, uh, and so while the time you've got, uh, while the Lord tarries, uh, you want to do everything in your power, to do with everything in your might as unto the Lord, it will complete all of our testimonies. As I travel, as I preach, as I come in contact with several 
uh, many uh, different people every week of my life. I find it very interesting as we dissect Christianity, as we dissect the Word of God. Here's what I know. There are a lot of people that believe Jesus is coming. There are a lot of people that live uh, a life pleasing to the world, but there are also a lot of people that when they live their lives, they live it with the assumption that Jesus could come tomorrow. And so when, as they're living their life, here's, here's kind of what we got. We've got in 2022 where we've got lazy on God because we're expecting God to come bail us out of all of our trouble. And can I ask, I, I've got to propose this question to you today, ladies and gentlemen. What if Jesus doesn't come for another 25 years from now? What if Jesus doesn't come for another 50 years from now? Can you imagine how messed up America's going to be if Jesus tears for 25 more years? And you think all the world's bad now. What if Jesus doesn't come for 50 more years? Or what if Jesus doesn't come for 75 years? And where we are in our America, there as we look at our society and we know how, I mean, can we all agree America's wicked today? Somebody say amen right there. America's messed up. America is no longer what she used to be. America was once a nation founded upon God, but uh, it's no fault, no longer standing upon the word of God. We are, uh, uh, we've adopted what was once wrong for what is now right, uh, and we've heard what was once right for what is now wrong. We are living uh, in a backward society, and I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in 2022, that God's people have sit back, uh, and we sit down, uh, and we say, well, Jesus is coming, so we can just ride this thing out until it comes. But I come to tell you, God did not call us to sit back. God did not call us to get lazy on him. God don't need bench warmers. God needs warriors in God's army that will rise to the occasion. And I come to tell you in 2020, hear me now, every grandma, every grandpa, listen to me. God, you don't retire out of God's army. God called you for a purpose. God called us for a plan. And we've got a generation coming up behind us that needs a generation before them to stand for what is right, to still proclaim the gospel uh, to still proclaim there is but one way to heaven uh, and I come to tell somebody we ought to be determined that yes Jesus is coming uh, but we ought to be determined to live every day of our life as if Jesus is coming today the determination of the living I find not only do I see the day of the Lord but I also see the determination of the living I love to give you just a couple of things that I believe Second Peter tells us we should be determined to do and number one we should be determined to live holy we should be determined to live holy you know one thing that a lot of people don't like to talk about is living holy in this world today. We've come in a world today where people no longer see sin as sin anymore. People no longer view the Bible as God's word anymore. Uh, we live in a society today where if you start talking and preaching about sin, everybody wants to get upset at you because you start talking about their sin. But I'd love to tell you that what was wrong when God said it was wrong is still wrong today. God has not changed his mind. God has not uh, adopted someone else's opinion. What the Bible says is still what God means. In our world, I mean, we're living in a, in a society today where it's almost more common to see a man marrying a man than it is for a man to marry a woman. We're living in a society today where we've got, I've got to explain to my little boy as we go into a truck stop that it is very possible that a born woman could walk into the man's bathroom. We live in a society today where it's very common to see school shooters walk into our schools. We're living in a messed up society. We're living in a broken society. We're living in a society where if you cut on television, they're telling you one thing and God's word tells you another. We're living in a society where if you cut on Disney Channel, Disney's telling you one thing and God's world's telling you another. We're, telling you. We're living in a society where if you go to school, the school teachers are telling you one thing and God's word tells you another. And where we're living at today is we're living in a time where so many of God's people sit back and we're okay with it. But I come to tell you that God ain't changed his mind. There is no gray area when it comes to the word of God. Every question we've got is found in God's Bible. And I come to tell a generation, a charging generation, God help us not to adapt to this society. Not to adapt to the world. Yes, we've got to live in it, but it is possible to live in 2022 inside of America. Standing upon the word of God, you ought to make up your mind. Every other child may be doing it. Every other person may be doing it. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will stand for what is right. We will live right. We will march on for the cause of Christ. We ought to live holy. God help us in America today. To live right as unto the Lord. Live right as unto the Lord. Not only do I find that we should be determined to live holy, but I also find in verse number 12, we should be determined to look hard. Verse number 12, 2 Peter 3 says, Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. God help us to live our life looking for Jesus to come back. We should be determined to live holy. We should be determined to look hard. We should also be determined to lead our how many know that God ordained the man to be the spiritual leader of the house? 
God ordained the man to be the one that decides if you're going to church. God ordained the man to be the one to decide when it's time to pray, when it's time to, I'm not sliding ladies, I'm just trying to tell you that in the society we live in today, if you begin to look at statistics in our, in our normal world, uh, that most of the time it's the lady who's more spiritual than the man is. That's the way we live in today. We live in a society where most of the churches I go to, it's more women than there are men. Uh, and in our world today, hear me, what we're lacking in America today is leaders. Can we just talk about this for a minute and understand that if Jesus doesn't come for another 35 years from now, our children are going to be the leaders of the next generation? I don't know how that does you all, but it scares me to death to think of the generations coming up behind me that's going to be the leaders of tomorrow. Uh, in a world we're living in today, uh, nobody wants to be leaders. Nobody wants to stand for what's right. Nobody wants to stand for the truth. We live in a society today where every other group makes it very known what they're standing for. If they're a sodomite, they're very opinionated on what they stand for. Uh, if they're a Democrat, they're very opinionated on what they stand for. If they're a Republican, they're very opinionated for what they stand for. But God's people in this generation have sit down and we've sit back and we've shut up and we've kind of stood under the coattail and, and say, well, Jesus is coming, so we're supposed to be this way. But, but what if God doesn't come for another 15 years from now? I come and tell you what we need is some men uh, that will be men and pull their big boy britches up, uh, grow a backbone, uh, and say, this is my house. Uh, these are my children. Uh, I'm going to lead them as unto uh, the Lord. Hear me now. If everybody else can voice their opinion, I say God's people uh, are to rise to the occasion uh, and say that Jesus, yes, he's coming. Uh, but he ain't come yet. Uh, so until he does, may you find me faithful. I don't want God to find me being halfway in and halfway out. I want God to find me being faithful. I want to be a faithful husband. I want to be a faithful daddy. You want to make up your mind. I want to be determined every day of my life to live as unto the Lord. We want to live right. We want to stay true. Be determined. I find the day of the Lord. I find the determination of the living. But also I want you to look at the destruction of the left. The destruction of the left. How many of you agree with me this morning that heaven's going to be wonderful? But can I, can I tell you this? Not everybody is going to heaven. Uh, we live in a society today, and I, I realize I'm in Tennessee, and, and uh, I'm still uh, in the Bible Belt where there's churches on every corner. Uh, where I'm from, you can throw a rock from one church parking lot to another church parking lot. I mean churches everywhere. And we live in a, we live in a society today that it don't matter who you ask, are you going to heaven? Everybody says they're going to heaven. You can ask the lady at Huddle House. You can ask the lady at Walmart. You can ask the drunk on the street. You say to going to heaven. Yeah, I'm going to heaven. That's the way we live. You know that they tell me 70% of America claims to be saved and going to heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, can we just be very honest here? If 70% of America were saved and on their way to heaven, we wouldn't be in nowhere near as bad of a shape as where we're in today. There's no way, hear me, and then we, then, we, then we take the Bible into perspective, and here's what I know about the Bible. The Bible teaches us that there's more people going to hell than there are going to heaven. The Bible describes heaven as a very narrow gate, describes hell as a very wide gate. Matthew tells us that many will say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And I will say, depart from me, for I never knew you. And I stopped by uh, Tennessee this morning to tell somebody, you can come to church, you can attend Bible school, uh, you can come every single service out of the year, uh, you can carry your Bible, uh, you can wear a suit and tie to church, but it does not guarantee you a spot in heaven. Uh, I don't care how long you've been going to church, uh, I don't care if your grandpa found in the church, uh, it does not guarantee you a spot in heaven. Uh, but the only way, hear me now, the only way you go to heaven, you don't go to heaven by being a Baptist, uh, you don't go to heaven by being baptized, uh, but the only the way you go to heaven uh, is you have to be washed in the shed blood uh, of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, uh, the truth, and the life. Uh, and no man coming to the Father uh, but by me. Uh, and we live in a society today uh, where people think if I'm a good person, uh, if I do the right thing, uh, if I go to church, uh, then I must be saved and going to heaven. Uh, but I come to tell you there's got to be a trip to Calvary. Uh, there's got to be a conversion. Uh, there's got to be a difference that was transpired uh, in your and God forbid you come to Timber Baptist Church every week of your life. God forbid you carry a Bible to church. God forbid you come to Sunday school and your word church goes to church and you die and go to hell. When he said many will say to me in that day, he wasn't talking about the drug crowd. He wasn't talking about the drug crowd. He was talking about the church crowd. The church that claimed to be saved. The church that claimed to be going to heaven. And I stopped by tonight to tell somebody, you better make sure that Jesus lives inside your heart. There's a lot of people who are playing games with God, playing church and playing religion. All of a sudden, Jesus is going to come back and 
Bible says the church will be removed and the Spirit of God is going to go in all hell. It's going to break. The Bible teaches there will be three and a half years of relatively peace and, and three and a half years of hell on earth. I don't have time to go into the Bible and tell you all about the tribulation. I know you all get enough preaching and you hear all about this, but I can sum it up by saying this. The tribulation is going to be so bad you don't want to be there. Can I say this today? I believe in the fiber in my being that Jesus don't want you to be there either. The Bible says in his will that none should perish. And what burdens my heart the most is the amount of people, listen to me, that walk in church playing games with God, walk in church playing religion. I believe religion is one of the biggest things that's sending people to hell today because you've told yourself a lie for so long that even you begin to believe it yourself that it's true now. And the devil is sitting down beside you telling you that if you were truly lost, you wouldn't go to church. If you were lost, you wouldn't say amen. If you were lost, you would. I come to tell you that it is very impossible to go to church every single week and still die and go to hell. Tell it's finally important that you understand. Listen to me now. It's finally important that you understand that there is a Savior that can change your life. He can change you. He can save you. He can deliver you. My God, whatever you do, don't you dare die without Jesus. Can you imagine a world without the people of God? You know, for so long, our world has been trying their best to shut God out shut the people of God out, tell us that we don't belong here, how many know one day they're going to get their wish? People of God ain't going to be here no more. The Spirit of God ain't going to be here no more. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, all of a sudden, all those people that like to play games with God, like to play church, would give anything to be able to have another chance saying yes to Jesus. I realize that hell is going to be a bad place, but you'll never convince me that hell won't be just a little worse for those people that come to church every single week of their life, knowing that they had a chance all the time and they did not come to Jesus. I'll tell you this and I'll, I'll take my seat. I believe in our world today, a lot of people have what I would call Romans 10, 13 religion. I mean, no, Romans 10, 13 says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I believe that, but I also believe this, that you don't get saved when you want to get saved. You don't just wake up one day and decide, I want to get saved today. You don't just wake up in a mess in your life and decide, I want Jesus to come bail me out of all my troubles. You don't get saved. The Bible says this, no man can come into the Father unless the Spirit draws them. Which means this, you must first be lost before you can ever be found. I don't believe in this whole, you come down to an altar and you get saved and you go back living the same way you lived before. I don't believe that's true salvation. I believe that's, I believe that's religion. I believe the Bible says if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Though all things are become new. I don't believe in a God that can just do half things in my life. I believe in a God that can do everything in my life. That can take a drunk and change him. That can take an addict and change him. That can take a broken marriage. And I believe in a God that can change your life. And God forbid you walk in and serve us every single week. God, I know I'm preaching to the choir this morning. And I know all of you are good, real good churchy people. And most of you probably come to church every single week of your life. But I come to tell you under God, you better hear me. Whatever you do, don't you live a life so close to church. Don't you live a life so close to this environment that you miss out on heaven. You better make him. You better make sure. Listen to me now. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. You better make sure that you don't have religion. You don't have a false doctrine. You don't have some kind of false imagination of heaven. But you better make sure the house of God lives inside of your heart. It's a God thing. The Bible says these things have been written to you that you may know. For those of us that know that we're saved, God help us to be determined to lead our home, to lead our children, to lead our world. One of the worst things ever is a mama or a daddy that don't lead their family to heaven. I'm an evangelist. I preach almost every week of my life in a different state, almost different church, almost every week of my life. And if it would be possible for me to win the whole world, how wonderful that would be. But if I won the whole world, and lost my children, I failed what God's called me to be. God help us to be leaders. God help us not to be lazy. God help us to be determined to live as unto the Lord. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? if you're not willing to repent. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.